Next is current timestamp. Current timestamp does the same thing as the get date function. It is a date time data type and it returns the date and the time of the computer in which the SQL uh, instance is being ran. So again, it returns the, the date and the time on your computer. Let's quickly see how it works. Like I said, it's really the same thing. So we won't spend as much time as on coin timestamp as we did on get date. But let me quickly show you what that looks like. I will open the new query box and let's call this current time stamp. And the syntax and the, the syntax is really just current timestamp, but we do have to add the select keyword, so current timestamp, and let's run this. So now it shows us the the year 2020. It shows us the two-digit month, July 07 and the two digits day 17 and of course we have the time as well it uses a 24 hour time counter we have 13 21 18 which would be 1 21 p.m and 18 as a second and 583 is a is the fraction of a second now just to show you that it is the same as the get date let's run both together We have our select for that. Okay, and let's run both together. And we see that it gives us exactly the same thing for the year, the month, the day, as well as the time. So you may want to ask what's, you know, why, you know, which one do you use? So the first answer is that really you could use either of the two. And the difference is just that get date, you know how we talked in the past about SQL dialect and depending on which relational database management system you're using, some of the language, well, they all use SQL, but some of the commands might be different. So get date function is a T-SQL or a Microsoft um, SQL, you know, Microsoft data, relational database management system way of retri retrieving the current date and time whereas current timestamp is more of a general so irrespective of which um, relational database management system you're using you can use current timestamp to get the current date and the current time so really like i said you can use anyone i you know i find myself using get date but there have been there are times in which i use current timestamp as well and, and we can, you know, just so we don't leave it there, we can copy the same thing we have here because we need to, you know, let's create a table as well using, instead of using get dates, now we're going to use the current timestamp. And let's call this messenger2. Okay, we have the same username, same column username, message, and create it at. But now the date time is the same because they're both date time. We're going to use a default value as well, but now instead of using get date, we want to use current timestamp. Current timestamp, and because it's not a function, we don't have the the open and close parentheses, but we do have to close our, our parentheses here, right? Okay, so now we're using current timestamp, and let's create this table. So the table is created. We can select all from Messenger 2. And let's run that. We have our columns. And we'll also just copy the same values we have here. And we may not necessarily have to enter, enter everything. Um, so I'll just copy that. And I'm just going to paste here. And we'll call this messenger2. Okay. And now let's just, uh, just to 
make it slightly different. Let's say this is, let's call this Mary. Um, let's call this person Mary. And just use the name. And let's enter this value. Let's see, print out our table. We have the timestamp. And let's say Mary stuck into to Chantel. Not chef, that's how you spell, but Chantel. <laughs> um, and Chantel is responding by saying nothing much. What are you up to? And let's see. Okay, we have to messenger two. All right, let's just change all of that. Messenger two. Okay. So Chantel response. That's done. And then we have Mary also saying something new. And even though we're just using two, a conversation between two people, obviously it could be with as many people uh, within that, I say, chat group, or, you know, it doesn't have to be just Mary and Chantal, right? Okay, and I'm also just um, sort of while and aware time so that we have different timestamps. So Mary just chilling, might go out for a run later. So let's run that. And then let's say Dave is also a friend and Dave is just a nosy one. And Dave says, hey ladies, what are you up to? today. So we're assuming that Dave, Dave is a part of a chat group in which this Chantel and Mary belongs to. So Dave is now asking, hey ladies, what are you up to today? Okay, so let's enter that. All right, so let's check our table now. And we can see all those conversations with the, the username of the people. So Mary says, hey, what are you up to? Chantal says, not much, what are you up to? Just chilling, my girlfriend will run later. And then Dave comes in and says, hey ladies, what are you doing? What are you? Oh, what are, what are you today? Oh, okay. Anyways, we, you get a point. So we have, so I must have made a mistake here. What are you up to? Okay. So we have our timestamp, which is really what we want to focus on, the different times in which those messages came through. And we could see that it, it, it differs, you know, some few seconds and you know, a minute, a couple of minutes and so on. And, um, and of course we can, we can also order by, you know, we can order by, you know, either by the username, by the created ad, and, you know, so let's say we let's say select all from Messenger 2. Okay, but we want to order by, let's say we want to order by, so right now it's ordered by um, really just how we enter the information, but let's say we want to order by created ad. Created ad, but we want it to be because right now it is ascending, so from the smallest to the largest, but we want it to be descending. So basically, we want to see Dave's message first. Okay, let me run that. So now we see that because Dave was at 1327, it's larger, right? So it's now ordered descending. Okay, so that would be it for time, um, current timestamp, and we'll move forward to the next video.